Welcome to Sarah's Music. We're back in Bonn at the annual Beethoven Fest and today we have an unusual combination of artists for you. A famous piano duo, a rock guitarist, a drummer and seven break dancers. And how that's all going to work? We'll find out. The break dancers, who are also known as B-boys, arrived from Paris and immediately filled the Beethoven Halle with their energy. Katja and Marielle Labeck invited them to take part in David Schaumann's Star-Crossed Lovers, a modern-day Romeo and Juliet. The dancers told me that dancing in front of a mainly classical music audience is a very special event for them. Here we are again. <laughs> Katja and Marielle, welcome back to Sarah's Thank Music. You. We're here in Bonn today yeah. and it's a very unusual combination. We have a two classical, mm -hmm. classically trained pianists, we have yeah. a rock guitar, we have a drummer and we have break dancers. Uh, mm -hmm. How did this project come about? David Chalma invented this score around the myths of Romeo and Juliet, for, especially for Yamano Kur to choreography with his seven uh, dancer break dance. So Marielle, how would you describe this music? Because it's, it's hard to put in a, in a genre, but we don't yes, have to put it in a genre. No, we don't have to. This no. is what I love about you, it's, you girls, you're always pushing these barriers. Yeah, it's a new music and, and it's just, you know, using electronic and, you know, having drums and the piano and it, it has a lot of character and it goes extremely well with the ballet because you, you can, I mean, especially when you, you hear the music with the dancer, then it becomes clear the, the story that, you know, what he's saying with the music. But it's a totally different different thing i mean to yeah. put you for, for you both i mean mm -hmm. to work with dance is one thing but the break dancers yeah. how how did they react to the music they, when they heard they it they were amazing i have to say it has been only pleasure to work with them well they, they have beautiful spirit and they're very hard worker there's a lot yeah, of classical dance yeah, in there yes yeah. it is not from them but they have to do pas de deux with a dancer mm -hmm. or dancer uh, Juliette, she's contemporary dancer, she's not break dancer, but of course they have to carry her and in break dance that they, they does not do exist, they mm. never carry a woman, so that was very new for them. And also for them to remember this kind of music, because then it has a story and you know it was, it was hard. So I'm really looking forward to the performance, thank you so much thank and you. it's really very powerful music, really electrifying and, yeah. uh, and you, you are a great Montague and Capulet family I must say. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bonn. Thank you. <laughs> it looks terribly complicated. Um, not only are you the composer, but you control all these sounds with your feet, with your hands, with your guitars, and you yeah. have to keep an eye out on what's going on. Almost a dancer here sometimes. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell me, how did this come about? How, I mean, Romeo and Juliet, it's, it's a, a fantastic story to put to music. A lot of people yeah. have done it before yeah. you. How did it come about? The idea of the ballet was quite uh, challenging and uh, as you said, Romeo and Juliet, uh, I try not to think too much of uh, <laughs> other people doing it. You know, you, I sh shouldn't think about that when you start writing. You know the sisters very well. You know their, their strengths. You know who does what very well. And you've divided the stage a little bit. You have the Montagues and the Capulets. Yes. So we're the Capulets on this side and the, and the Montague on the other side. And um, yeah, writing for Katia and Miley is amazing because I, I've been recording them for a long time. So working in the studio and uh, of course uh, I've watched a lot of shows and they're so different and so complimentary that... Uh, How are they different? 
Uh, well, Marielle is really good on the rhythm and the lows and the crazy uh, strong basses. And uh, Katia is uh, melodic and uh, uh, brilliant and uh, fast. And uh, so I, I, That's I, what you wrote. Yeah, then. I wrote for <laughs> them in, in thinking of that. You know. And what I love about doing my program is, is discovering these new art forms. And today I'm discovering breakdancing. One of the best things you said to me today was that you discovered this sort of classical music through doing this project yes, exactly. with the Labex. Yes, yes, with the Labex sister. And uh, the first time uh, I saw them, it was, um, I was touring with the Madonna and their friends. So we were uh, playing, uh, performing in Rome, and they were in Rome. And so they came to play for you. Yeah, yeah. they invited us to yeah. their house, and we went there, and I, I saw them playing face to like, face to face like this, and I was amazed. I was like, what is, what is this? And I, I felt like I felt like I had to dance, so I just danced, and they were they saw me dancing, so they they, they kept playing, and the other dancers came and they danced too, and then we talked. We became uh, you know not friends, but. Uh, we talked a lot, and then they came. They, they came up with this uh, idea, and uh, they said, "Yeah, man, we need you to dance with the, to, to dance with us with them on this show." And I said, well, "Let me choreograph something with some very good dancers." So, how do you go about teaching these guys who are maybe not used to, to doing set choreography? The dancers I'm working with, I know them very good, and uh, I've, cho I've chosen them because of their moves that I, I like. So I know exactly who. Uh, has some special moves so I know exactly how to put their own moves and use them on the music because and, and me I do think that uh, breakdancing has the perfect moves for classic cl classical music this is not the sort of music they would listen to at home on their no. headphones no, no, no not no, at no. all breakdancing is uh, something you know it's raw it's very like uh, it's it comes from uh, anger it's, it's the foundation because, because of the gangs before, you know. But now, I mean, we can use it like the way we want. It can be very slow. Some, some break dancers are doing some very hard moves in slow motion, you know. So we can use it at uh, the speed we want, on the music we want. We can do break dance on any music. It's, there is no limit. Is it difficult for them to learn because they're so used to improvising? Is it to, to learn this choreography? Well, for some of them, it was the first time they went on stage to win a show. Wow. And to me, it was really, it, it was real because um, I, wanted, I wanted them to keep this uh, breakdance attitude, you know? I didn't want to, them to be like, you know, dancers on <laughs> stage to win. No, I wanted them to be themselves as a b-boy, as a breakdancer. You discovered classical music through the Lebex, and I've now yeah. discovered breakdancing through the Lebex <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes! <laughs>
this, 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 this. That's all from Sarah's music for today. Oh, I'm wrong hand. Here, 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 here. A horn challenge is usually when you have to play, but because you are such amazing dancers, I just want to see what you would do with this. <laughs> Come, just, just, just move. Just want to see how you move. It. But don't drop it, you promise. <laughs> 